Now, buddy, the idea of the wind turbine definitely is brilliant. You know, creating electricity out of the movement of the wind. Definitely genius and, you know, it's a very good way of creating clean carbon emissions free um, electricity. I know wind parts are being built all around the world, especially in the Microsoft Flight Simulator for some reason. California, what the hell is wrong with you? It just goes on. It's, yeah, look at all these objects. My poor computer. Look at this. Yes. Some more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Damn, that's a whole lot of windmills. But everybody, there's one big problem about wind parks in general, and it's, you know, building them, especially transporting these insanely huge blades, Jesus Christ, this is here in China, where they have to very, very carefully transport around wind turbine blades. We can see fails of them all around the world. I mean, look at this. All right, this was definitely not, um, not, you know, up to safety standards here in transporting. You know, a normal operation of wind turbine blades being transported. And the thing is, wind turbines and their blades will in the future be even longer. This is a 17 meter long blade. Current concept of future wind turbines will have blades of up to 100 meters of length. Everybody, how do we transport around those? We haven't got planes that are long enough, especially with the Antonov and 5 being destroyed now. What do we do? The road sucks. How do we get blades transported through the world? Everybody, this is the company of Radia with their new Windrunner airplane concept. Everybody, these guys are planning on making the biggest airplane in the world. And this concept truly does seem interesting. Yes, it's been all around the news lately. Gigantic new aircraft design aims to create the largest airplane ever to fly. Take a look at the size comparison on the Radia website. Windrunner trademark. It's a lot bigger than the Antonov An-124, a plane that you would normally take to transport really, really long and big things around. I mean, take a look at the 747 here. I mean, this thing's got a loading volume of over 8,200 cubic meters. And with the length of over 100 meters, this thing will be able to carry most blades around. I mean, this thing is practically designed to be transporting, you know, these blades here. Take a look. And now, everybody, I've got good news because we have this ginormous airplane added now to the flight simulator. Thanks to the user of Rico Van Dyke, we made a little add-on for the airplane. And doesn't this look uh, good? I mean, it looks okay. It's not the best of add-ons, obviously. This was done in a couple of hours. We only have a small 2D cockpit. We don't have a nose that opens like it does in the concept. I've added some uh, better logos here also to the engines to resemble the concept a little better. Now, you know what? I'm, I'm a bit skeptical of this concept because it is, of course, aiming for such a big goal. I mean, you know, as an aircraft manufacturer that hasn't manufactured any aircraft showing the world a few you know very very good 3d renders we do have to say might not be the goal this might be just drawing things into the future but i mean these renders really are good i'm not quite sure about which engines they'll use what avionics they'll use i guess they maybe work together with boeing Hopefully that door doesn't fall off then. Everybody, you know, a few pictures, a few renders that really interested me are, you know, kind of those. Take a look at the ruggability of this aircraft. Yes, everybody, this thing's, you know, supposedly going to operate at rough run weight of a run rate in length of over 1,800 meters. I mean, it's quite obvious that for this plane to make even any sense, it needs to be flyable to remote locations where you'd find wind parks. I mean, if you're going to just fly to a big airport anyway, like the Antonov Antonov 2 5 would have to. I mean, that's needs a long runway, meaning that the blade still has to be transported around through, uh, through roads. You know, you practically have no benefits over taking a huge cargo ship. It's something that we still have today without needing billions of dollars in investment money. Everybody, this thing is supposedly able to land on very rough terrain. So let me prepare to strip as short as 6,000 feet, and we'll check that out here today. I'm not quite sure, you know, which engine data, how much power this airplane has was used for making this add-on. Again, we have no idea about how this thing is supposed to be propelled. We need really strong four engines in order to you know, go that fast in a very short amount of distance, a runway distance. I mean, take a look. So let me see if this runway data makes any sense. There we go. The good thing about these blades is that they're not super heavy, right? So carrying heavy things isn't a big problem and it's never really a strength of these huge transport aircraft anyway. I mean, the Airbus Beluga, also like the Dreamlifter, both of these planes cannot carry that much cargo. In fact, the maximum payload weight for this airplane is a planned 70,000 kilograms or 160,000 pounds. I mean, if you compare that to the vast payload uh, weight of 500,000 pounds of the Antonov, so 
five times more. This thing is really only specialized for carrying very light, low density, but long and big cargo. So this thing will probably not be transporting around anything else than blades. Also, something I like is how the developers of this add-on added some tilted landing gear. That's always a good one. That's always how you win me over. Put that landing gear up and we did take off in a very short distance. That's actually quite ridiculous. Everybody, yes, we've got an absolutely non-swept wing right here. They pride us practically an oversized Cessna wing. That means this airplane, while probably not being, you know, the fastest, right? It's probably not going to have a very big cruise speed. Also, though, fuel economy wise, I'm not quite sure about the shaping of the wing. This wing provides like a ton of millions of thousands of lift. And we can just see that. This airplane flies like a dream, actually. Let's take a bit of a look. We want to fly this too short air airports, runways. I mean, again, this airplane is, you know, 20 meters longer than the biggest airplane in the world, the Antonov An-225. Well, overall, I'm actually quite a big fan of the idea of building another huge super air transporter. The problem is, you know, with these old Antonovs that we have that are still out of Soviet time, yes, if you ignore the Beluga or the Dreamlifter, we only have very outdated airplanes that can carry huge amounts of cargo. So it never is a bad idea to think ahead and maybe plan on, you know, relieving these old Antonov planes from their misery. Come on, let's take off. Go full power and at St. Bartholomew Airport. We must have very strong engines, by the way, in order to carry this. Maybe if you partner up with General Electric, you could put some GE90s up to them. That could actually maybe make sense. I mean, these could provide like 400,000 pounds of power. Let's take off. Come on, you can do this wing. We've got a ramp here that will help us. Yes, of course. This thing has to be able to... Oh... Uh also transport cargo into uh, the Caribbean. Why have I even tried this? Why isn't this actually working as poorly as I as I thought? Wait, hold on. Yes! We don't know how physically accurate this one is. But take a look. Everybody, yes. We shall now try an actual runway where this thing's supposed to be able to operate at. All right. Yes, every, uh, everybody, we are flying here in the middle of Germany land. Yes, everybody, our runway's right there. It's a grass runway. This thing has to be able to land everywhere once again. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. You know how the company of Radia could win me over if they actually made an X-plane model of the plane, like an add-on, to show us what how do they think the cockpit's gonna look like up there? I mean, this looks like this literally a sci-fi idea of a plane just yet. You know, humans have dreamt about aviation for over 100 years, even before aviation itself existed. I mean, we talked so much about Manhattan Sky Airport. Oh, no. All right, why are there trees here? That's very bad placing of trees. There you go. Oh, geez, that's our plane is high, and we don't have any GPWS call. I'll stop now. Yes, everybody. There we go. After crashing through the trees, We've actually stopped in no time. This airplane is able to operate at like zero speed. Yes, we've done it. And here we can now build a huge airport. <sighs> not bad, not bad at all. Go ahead and try to see if we can take off from this airport. Here is actually, this is Helgoland. This place is famous for its huge offshore water parks. They are here. Can you see them? Yeah, there they are in the background. Wouldn't it make sense to be able to fly to this island directly? Let's go. This is actually like genuinely a proper short runway test. Let's go ahead and put the flaps out all the way. Just like that. See if we can take off. I mean, these wings definitely are quite perfect for this usage. Come on. Good, 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 uh, good, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> this airplane's performance is quite ridiculous. I mean, let's be fair. Like this thing, while of course they have an insanely good website, might also just seem like a huge prank to see, well, how much media attention can we get with a phenomenally designed website for a concept airplane that kind of lacks substance still. I mean, ideas in the past have always started with them being, you know, a bit ridiculous. We might see, um, I guess, I guess a timeline for this could be easy 20 to 30 years. With lots of people even doubting the future of these wind turbine parks, it's very easy to be skeptical of this concept of, you know, whether it's actually just a far-fetched idea or an investment worthy opportunity. For me, I, I'm, I'm not buying just yet. All right, let's maybe create a, let's maybe do a butter landing at, at last. All right, let's not allow the surplus plan at a short runway absolutely fine all right good let's stop quickly please yes that's fine Perfect! Good one. So ready the radio, wind runner. I can't wait to see this airplane by the time I'm 60. Or never. I think a better idea would be to just have wind turbines that you could split into several parts and then could be like, you know, reconstructed at the actual site. Couldn't we start there? Wouldn't that be a better idea than building a new airplane? I have no idea. 
So everybody, <laughs> thank you so much for watching this Wind Runner video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters: <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Deram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.